Park. Everyone congregates at Philly's way to celebrate the bash and the bashing that goes on inside. Last night, the party continued. Three, two, pitch. Well, not hit in the air. Deep toward right field. Backing up is Jones. Gone! Three round opposite field home run for Jason Worth. In the air to straight away center field. McCutcheon on the run. Warning track. Whoa! Tonight, another different lineup for the Phillies. No matter though, they erupted for 12 runs. We'll see if they can do it again tonight. The culmination of this two-game series against the Pirates here at Citizens Bank Park. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy. Hello with Gary Matthews. Chris Wheeler will be along in just a little bit. Well, Roy Halladay's on the hill for the Phillies tonight. Of course, the Phillies ace. And he'll, he will have a front row seat to see if numbers four and five in this Phillies lineup Ryan Howard and Jason Worth can duplicate what they did last night. Yeah, well, these guys, when they are hitting the ball and driving the ball the way that they're capable, look out National League East. Now, take a look here at the offense last night. Here's a ball hit right in the hole there. Not trying to do that. Just kind of almost going with it and going with it. He did. Jason Worth, as he hits that ball out to right field, thought he had another one straight away center field. That's how you know Jason Worth is really on his job there. And now the big piece as he drives that ball for his ninth grand slam as he puts a little icing there on the cake. Boy, that had to feel good to him. Now look at these numbers here. Six RBIs there for Ryan Howard. Four RBIs for Jason Worth. Boy, he is off to such a terrific terrific start here this year Tom and tonight those guys will be in their normal spots in this lineup Jimmy Rollins once again will bat third Chase Utley is not in the lineup tonight battling the flu once again as we mentioned Roy Halladay's on the hill he's also going to be in the stands everywhere that's right it's Roy Halladay bobblehead doll night compliments of Toyota and he will be opposed this evening by Zach Duke, who pitched a gem here at Citizens Bank Park last year before the All-Star break. And speaking about pitching here at Citizens Bank Park, Roy Halladay unbeaten with three wins and earned run average just over one. He'll put those numbers to the test tonight. The lineups are next.
series between the Phillies and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Phillies won last night and now have won four consecutive ball games. Looking for five in a row. They begin play tonight. Four and a half games up in the National League East over the Florida Marlins. Well, earlier today, with the help of Kyle Kendrick, the good folks at Citizens Bank Park launched another fantastic event, which will help the kids in the Philadelphia area, New Jersey, Delaware, the state of Pennsylvania. It's the Citizens Bank Helping Hands Glove Donation. During the course of the season, fans are invited to bring gently used or new gloves to the ballpark, and they can put them right in that bin out there, out in right field. Kyle was part of those ceremonies. The great folks at Citizens Bank Park have donated more than seven, or excuse me, 3,800 gloves for the Phillies Junior RBI League over the years, and they've helped more than 7,000 children throughout Philadelphia, New Jersey, and Delaware, all part of the Citizens Bank Helping Hands Glove Donation. Great thing to do, and if you can do it, each and every time you come to the ballpark, it would be greatly appreciated. And you can also fill out a form to win a Chase Utley autographed glove nice. at the end of the year. Well, Citizens Bank, great partner for the Phillies and a great partner here in this community. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Pirates tonight, brought to you by Xfinity, leading it off at second base, Delwyn Young. Andy LaRoche, the left, uh, excuse me, batting second is Lastings Millage. He's in left field. Andrew Akutch at the center fielder, bats third. Garrett Jones hits fourth, followed by Ryan Church, the right fielder. Ryan Dolan, the catcher, bats sixth. In the bottom third of Andy LaRoche, Ronnie Cedeno, and Zach Duke to face right-hander Roy Halliday, who is making another start here at Citizens Bank Park. Overall, his ninth start of the year. Six and one with a 1.59 earned run average. And Roy Halliday with the numbers on him. Last time out, he really struggled in that game in Colorado, and it was cold that day, and it's cold tonight. <laughs> you know, this is a night hitters don't like to hit in this stuff, but sometimes pitchers can have problems as you check his numbers out there, gripping the baseball. Here's our Southwest Airlines scouting report on Roy Halliday, and uh, he's faced the Pirates a couple times. He's pitched well against him. He's also faced Zach Duke in one of his starts against the Pirates. And facing Delwyn Young to start things off here in the top of the first. Young began the game last night with a home run in that first inning. The count one ball and one strike to Young. It's a night where you can really get some bees in the fingers. It's the first thing that Sarge saw when he came in the ballpark. That one is smoked off the glove of Polanco. He recovers and throws Young out. One away. That's the other thing you know about uh, fielders, too. You know, it's hard a lot of times for the fielders to stay on their toes on a night like this because they're all trying to stay warm. And sure enough, what happens? First ball is a slicer coming right at Polanco. That was a great shot. You can see that thing spinning and the way it was slicing away from him. Nice recovery and a good job by Ryan on the other end to dig it out. Good job all the way around by the Phillies cornerman. Here's Lastings Village. He did not play in last night's ball game. 0 for 3 in his career against Roy Halladay. Village overall hitting 246. No homers in 14 RBIs. That's kind of a surprise that he is not homered. And a swing and a miss at that cutter, and it's one ball and one strike. Halliday in his last game against the Rockies, as Wheel said, struggled somewhat. He allowed 10 hits in six of the third innings. Never got in a groove in that game. You know, he just fought himself and the elements that day. Now, as I mentioned, it's really cold here tonight, but, you know, this is his second start in it. Um, Pitching in his home park, a little different. Bobblehead night, too, for Roy Halliday. Oh, and he gets Millage swinging at a, what looked like a wiffle ball. That was a cutter again, two away. I wonder if the wind had anything to do with that, because he said that looked like a, he used to call it an out shoot with a wiffle ball. It's a cutter, and it really moved. Whoa, look at that thing go. Millage was swinging fastball in the whole time. Here's Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon 0 for 4 last night. How about what McCutcheon's done here in the month of May? He's hitting 396 in the month of May. 439 over his last dozen or so games. Pirates as a team are hitting 211 in the month of May. <laughs> Talks about those struggles they've had offensively so far in this month. One and one that counts to McCutcheon. And it's up high and in. Two balls and one strike. Halliday's a great guy for the players to work behind, though. He gets a ball, he gets a sign, he throws it. Uh, you know, on a night like this, that's what the fielders want. Somebody works fast. And throws a lot of strikes the way he does.
the 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him on a breaking ball. McCutcheon is rung up. 1 2 3 go the Pirates here at the top of the first. We head to the bottom of the first. It's the Pirates nothing. Xfinity. Shane Victorino once again in the leadoff spot at center. Placido Polanco back at third, hitting second. Jimmy Rollins hits third, followed by Ryan Howard, the first baseman. Jason Worth, the right fielder, bats fifth. Ben Francisco making his first start since the 26th of April is in left field, batting sixth. Hitting seventh, Carlos Ruiz. Batting eighth, Juan Castro, the second baseman. And batting ninth, of course, is Roy Halladay. They're facing a guy that they've seen quite often over the years. It's left hitter Zach Duke, who's making his ninth start of the year. Wills made his major league debut against the Phillies a few years ago. And, you know, a lot of these Pirates pitchers, most of them, they just don't have very good numbers. And, you know, he's another guy. But Zach Duke is one of those guys can give you problems, especially with all the left handed hitters the Phillies have. Now, one of them not playing tonight. Actually, two of them not playing tonight in, in uh, Ibanez and Chase Utley. There's a scouting report on him. He does compete and he does throw strikes. He does like to use his slider and change up. Shane Victorino leads things off here at the bottom of the first. He takes a strike. Phillies have had some of these guys like Duke or Zelani over the years. Some of their left handers have given them problems in, in uh, different games. See what Shane has done here in the month of May, hitting 343. Well, they get Gorzolani tomorrow night, but he's in a Cubs uniform. <laughs> and the Pirates who will return home. To Pittsburgh for five. The Phillies will welcome in the Cubs for two before the Red Sox come to town this weekend. Reports on Zach Duke and haven't seen him and haven't having seen him over the years. He will pitch inside, and you see right there a couple pitches already to Shane Victorino. And guys don't really want the ball in on a night like this. Victorino skies one to right. Ryan Church over toward the line and one away. During the 2010 season, Turkey Hill will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream. Sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. So one guy here in the bottom of the first, Placido Polanco, the batter. Polanco hitting 316. Five homers and 21 runs batted in. Polanco's had a very good month of May, sitting 338 during the month. And overall, his numbers against the Pirates have been really good. And he takes a pitch down and away, 1 0. A chopper toward third, backhanded by LaRoche. He has plenty of time to set himself and quickly two away here in the first. Zach Duke last year. Pitched a, a fantastic ball game against the Phillies right before the All-Star break, and you know, not only did it make him feel good to finish up the first half of the year that way, but also got him an invitation to the All-Star game. It was Charlie Manuel is the manager of the National League team last year, got a front-row seat at Zach Duke's outing and was pretty impressed. There's Jimmy Rollins batting third for the second straight night. Chase Utley still under the weather. 
Charlie did say that Chase was better today, but he decided to give him the day off. Yeah, he's here tonight. Uh, I don't know if he's on the bench. You know, Chase Huntley wants to be because he. It's tough for him not to play. He doesn't like this. I asked Charlie. So what's tougher when you, when you tell him he's not playing. Uh, because he needs a day off or if he has an injury or if he's sick, he said none of it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> he says I don't ever like to tell him he's not playing. <laughs> Jimmy was two for four in last night's ball game batting third. And Chase pretty sick and uh, you know. The, 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 it's a great night for him not to play, even though you know he wants to play every inning of every game. But you got a left-hander going tonight. It's cold, and he's not feeling well. Good night to sit. Jimmy hits it hard towards short. Cedeno down to one knee and throws across the diamond. A one-two-three bottom of the first for Zach Duke. So, Roy, how? <clears throat> hey, traveling this season, we'll take the Phillies with you. Subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every Phillies game live or on demand on your computer. Visit Phillies.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. Garrett Jones leads it off here in the top of the second inning. Jones last night was one for four with a couple strikeouts, playing first base tonight. It's a position that he is comfortable in because he played it when he was with the Minnesota Twins. We've seen him mostly as an outfielder in a Pirates uniform. Guy can hit though. He had four home runs in the first month of the season. Has just one here in the month of May, but his RBI totals continue to pile up. A lot of wind here, of course, tonight. As everybody in the Delaware Valley knows how hard the wind's been blowing today. Out of the Northeast. And what does that mean for the ball carrying? Probably doesn't mean it's going to carry real well, but there was no BP tonight, so we don't know. Yeah, the tarp was on the field until about an hour before the start of the ball game, and the ground screw got the infield ready for a play. And a breaking ball that hooks in for a strike, and it's two and two. But it's blowing from the right field corner to the left field corner, just the opposite of you see from the northwest a lot of times here. And see the way the flags are blowing, and, and when you're sitting where we are, it's blowing in, is what it is. Two and two the count. Chopper right side. Ryan Howard charging, stays down on it, and runs to the bag himself for the first out of the inning. So one away, and that's the second ground out for Roy Halliday. Halliday comes into this game leading the National League in innings pitched. And he is at 63 and two thirds right now. So he was leading the league even before the start of this ball game. 52 strikeouts in, or excuse me, 54 strikeouts now, in 63 and two thirds. Well, this is a great night to pound sinkers, and he has been pounding and let him just, you know, hit the ball into the ground 
hitters don't like nights like this and if the pitcher has a feel for the baseball and can command his stuff and the stuff this guy has Roy Halliday has you can get guys out. Ryan Church is one for six lifetime against him. And he takes that one low one ball and one strike. See the distribution of outs for Halliday. 47% of the outs are on the ground. Ryan Church was 0 for 4 in last night's ball game for the Pirates. 2 and 1 the count. And hit toward first again. Nice hop for Ryan Howard. Another unassisted put out. Two outs. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Marlins shut out the Diamondbacks eight to nothing. Dan Ugla and Cameron Maben both homered in that ball game. Ryan Barden two RBIs, replacing the benched Hanley Ramirez. How about that show that went on last night down in Florida, and it's still going on. Yeah, it's not good. Now, if you missed it last night, Hanley Ramirez was venturing back on a pop up into shallow left field. The ball dropped in, and then he inadvertently kicked it. And he kicked it to the left field corner. Now he had been batting earlier in the game and fouled the ball off his foot. So he was playing in a little bit of pain, but he didn't really go after the ball with a whole lot of vigor. And a couple of runs scored while he was right, sashaying after it. Anyway, when he came back to the dugout, as Ryan Dolman has the count 3 0 in his favor, Freddie Gonzalez asked him, Are you okay? And he said, Yeah, I'm fine. He goes, All right, well, you're out of the game. That one's over at the knees, three and one. So he took Ramirez out of the game. Ramirez did not take too kindly to it. So that he lost some respect for Gonzalez. And he doesn't know what it's like to play in the majors because he never played in the major leagues. Hurt. Domit loops one down the left field line. Francisco had a little trouble getting to it. And he's aboard with a two out double. Anyway, Ramirez was benched today, but his comments. He did not take back any of his comments, nor did he apologize to Freddie Gonzalez or his teammates. In fact, he kind of re emphasized his comments again today. It's not a pretty scene right now down in South Florida. Well, Freddie Gonzalez may have lost Ramirez for a while, but he got the other guys. Because when you stand up to a big boy on your team, the other guys really take notice. I've seen managers stand up to the subs, the extra men. Guys don't care about that. But when they stand up to the big boys, they pay attention. Here's Andy LaRoche who takes a fastball for a strike, and it's 0 and 1. It's like what Charlie did with Jimmy Rollins a couple of times. You know, it just something that had to be done. You know, they're fine. In fact, they couldn't be better friends, those two. They, they really like each other. A little low, 1 and 1 the count. And more than anything, I think, respect each other. You don't have to like somebody if you respect them. But they have both going for them, those two. One of the issues the Marlins have is that they're a young team. They don't have a whole lot of veteran presence. And one of the guys who is a veteran is Wes Helms, the former Philly, and he kind of stood up and said some things and supported Freddie Gonzalez. And we'll see what happens. Two and one the counts of the Roach. He hits it toward right field. That's pretty well hit. Slicing away from Worth. That's going to drop in for a base hit. And the Pirates are going to take a one nothing lead. LaRoche pulls it to second. It's an RBI double. So back to back extra base hits for Pittsburgh. Well, just like last night, they take the early lead. Yeah, one was a little dunker that Doman hit, but that ball was a cutter that hung out over the plate, it looked like, and was a hit me pitch, and that's just what LaRoche did. Watch this ball just stay up and away. And he smoked it to right field, and the wind kind of tailed it away from Jason Worth, at least it looked like it did. Here's Ronnie Cedeno, the number eight batter. And he takes a breaking ball for a strike. It's 0 and 1. Cedeno hitting 233. Three homers and nine RBIs. One for three last night. Oh, and that one's in on the hands. That's going to shake his hands a little bit. Ryan Howard makes the catch. And Roy Halliday strands a runner at second base. But the Pirates do get a run on the RBI by Andy LaRoche. So one run on.
on. And you know, we were talking the other day about just the way this team has played with all the injuries the Phillies have had. And it continues. And 11 games over 500, and Chase Utley's out with the flu, and they still keep rolling along. No, it's remarkable. And, and again, it's a sign of a, of a championship club that can uh, survive, you know, the, the, the number and the, uh, you know, the type of players that we've missed uh, throughout the course of the, you know, the first uh, 40 games of the season. So uh, uh, we, couldn't, we couldn't ask for, uh, you know, any, any, any more production and, uh, and uh, contribution than we've gotten from the guys uh, in, the, in that situation. You know, that brings uh, to a point, you and I were talking about this at one time, uh, the contribution. During the offseason, when you guys sit down and you sign these six-year minor league for you, and you're thinking about, Okay, they're going to play a triple-A, but if we have an injury on the big league level, can they help? How important are those signings and what's happened this year? Well, I can tell you in, in the case of Wilson Valdez and, uh, and Dwayne Wise, um, we immediately targeted those guys as soon as they became minor league free agents and uh, signed them very quickly back in November, uh, even before we signed Juan Castro and, uh, and Ross Glode. Um, you know, we were definitely, you know, looking to – you know, we, we didn't figure Matt Stairs was coming back. We wanted someone with a little more versatility. Eric Brunk with the same thing. Uh, wanted someone, uh, you know, might have been a bit of, little better defender upgrades in, in, in both areas, and we think we did that. And then we went and signed Juan and, uh, and, uh, and Ross, and, you know, we upgraded even further. So. Three and one the cow to Ryan Howard to start the bottom of the second inning. Three men overshift against Howard. And he lines it right over the head of Delwyn Young into right field, a base hit. So first hit of the day for the Phillies. They've got the leadoff batter aboard here in the second. Now bring Jason Wood to the plate. You know, Scott, you mentioned Wilson Valdez. And, you know, with Jimmy Rollins coming back, it's unfortunate. But because Juan Castro and Wilson Valdez both filled in nicely. But somebody had to go. Right. And Wilson was that guy that had to go. Right. And hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to keep him in the organization. I mean, uh, you know he's got to uh, he's got to clear through waivers and, uh, and then he has the ability to become a free agent uh, because of the rules he's got a prior outright assignment so you know but uh, we've had conversations with him and his agent and uh, we hope that uh, if he does not get claimed by another major league club that he'll still stay in the organization and and if he does I'm sure we'll get an opportunity to see him up here again at some point Jason Worth stands in and takes a pitch low when you see Paul Hoover Juan Castro Wilson Valdez perform the way they performed is it gratifying as a person within the front office, I think so. I think, and it's really a tribute to this to the work of the scouting de and development people who you know know these guys and, and recommend them. Um, you know, obviously Paul Hoover was uh, a guy that uh, Chuck and myself both knew from uh, experience with the Ray organization. Uh, Wilson Valdez was a guy that Charlie Kerfeld. Uh, we talked about him even last year, and then Charlie saw him again in. Uh, in the Dominican, and uh, you know, yeah, Juan he, was Cal gold, he was a gold glover in the Dominican this offseason. Yeah, and, and Juan Castro. I mean, uh, I had him uh, in uh, in Baltimore. He played shortstop for us on a regular basis uh, at the end. I believe it was the end of 08. Uh, played maybe 50 straight games at shortstop for us. So, you know, we, all that information goes into you know making recommendations on guys that you know we think can uh, can be upgrades and improve our bench. And that was something we really wanted to do this offseason. Three and one the count to word. You know, there's so many rules nowadays. <laughs> you know, you mentioned the term designated for assignment, waivers, uh, pulling guy back from waivers. Is that something you really have to sit on to make sure that you don't make mistakes? Well, you know, it, it's definitely something to be monitored. Uh, you know, we, we uh, and we have a number of people that, you know, uh, you know, back check and, and uh, double check and that sort of thing. So, but, uh, you know, honestly, F having done it for as long as I've been involved in it, um, you know, you get you get into the rhythm of it. You know, there are different things happen different times of the year, whether it's the trade waivers uh, and, op, you know, the difference between trade waivers and optional waivers, depending upon the time of the year and, uh, you know, how long the waivers are in effect for those sort of things. It, it becomes, I don't want to say routine, but, you know, it, it's it's really, you know, if it's if it's. You know, if it's March, you know this is this this is a set of circumstances. If it's May, this is the set of circumstances. If it's the off season, you know, so it you get very familiar with it after a period of time. Do you like the uh, trading deadline when that comes up and there's so much emphasis on moving people and bringing people in and that sort of stuff? Well, I will tell you, I like it a lot more when you're uh, when you're fighting for a uh, uh, spot in the postseason than when you're on the other end of the uh, the spectrum. And I've been there, so uh, it's a lot more it's a lot more it's a lot more fun now 
here with the Phillies than it was uh, back with the Rays and uh, and with the O's. But I mean, it is it's an opportunity in, in those situations, you know, to really to, to uh, you know. Uh, impact the future of the organization and make good decisions, you know, hopefully that can 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 push them towards this type of situation. So Scott Profrock, the Phillies assistant general manager, joining us here as uh, Ben Francisco gets a chance to bat with one away after the strikeout to Jason Worth. Scott, can, can you give us an update on Jay Happ and Brad Lidge? I know Brad had the cortisone shot yesterday. Jay threw a bullpen yesterday. What their progress is, is like now? Uh, that's pretty much uh, where it stands. I, I think Brad's not going to throw for a couple more days um, and then, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully get uh, in a situation where, you know, he can get back throwing. He's eligible to come off the DL uh, the first day in uh, New York next week on the road trip. So, you know, I don't know whether that's uh, in the realm of possibilities, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. And, uh, and, and Jay, you know, uh, threw a bullpen yesterday uh, and we'll you know we'll see hopefully he can progress to a rehab assignment here uh, you know um, and, and be back sometime next month uh, you know and again we were talking about it over the over the last road trip uh, a number of times I mean you get Brad back you get Jay back uh, and you get um, uh, Ryan back you know you know, we talk about the trade deadline. You know, we might not need to, need to make a deal at the trade <laughs> line if those guys all get healthy at the same time. So, well, talking to Brad today, Brad was very optimistic after the cortisone shot as Francisco bounces that towards short. Jay Happ was optimistic after the bullpen yesterday and throwing again this afternoon. So, those are all good signs. Well, a double play, 6 4 3 double play finishes up this inning. Scott, we appreciate you joining us. My pleasure, Tom. I will tell you that it's not a name that will roll right off yeah. the tip of your tongue. So it's not Omar Moreno. It is not, but that's a good guess. Yeah, that's a guy I, you know, I would want to go with because I remember him stealing a lot of bags. Many of them against the, the locals. Zach Duke, one for ten this year. He has scored a couple of runs because he's walked twice. And he's ahead two balls and one strike. And it's two and two. I mentioned that Roy Halladay has faced Zach Duke and the Pirates before. In fact, back in 2008, when he was opposed by Duke, these guys locked up in a real good pitcher's duel. Chopper over the mound. Rollins has to hurry around the bag. In time to get Duke. Duke yeah, hustled away. And Duke hustled down the line, too, Tom. You know, a lot of times pitchers just phone it in, especially on a cold night like this. They don't want to run and maybe blow a tire. But, uh, you know, he hustled down the line and made Jimmy have to work to, for that out. Jimmy 
as Will said, had to work, and he showed no ill effects of that that calf. I know we talked about it last night, and it's probably getting annoying to keep saying, "Oh, he looks good. He's running 100 percent. He's moving well." But he even said last night that moving from left to right in the game against Clearwater on Saturday was the final answer he needed that he was ready to come back. And they obviously feel he's okay playing on a night like this. This, no is, this is not the kind of night you stay loose. No, last night the same. Delwyn Young was retired by Placido Polanco his first time up. And he pulls that one toward the right side. Off the glove of Howard, but Castro is there. Halliday is there. One, four, three on the putout. And I think the Pirates are a little upset with that call. Yeah, that one to the naked eye looked like he beat it. But, uh, you know, many times when you look at the replay, the umpires are right. They do such a good job out there. All right, now I reverse the, the play there. It's 3 4 1 on the put out, not 1 4 3. Right, the old 3 4 1. You, know, you <laughs> see this a lot. Ryan Howard makes a stab at it, touches it. Castro double pumps. And he got him. I think yeah, he got him by a half a step. Called himself safe. He's out. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Good call. That's Paul Emmel, the first base umpire, who made that call. Two outs, the count 0 1 to Millage. Millage pops it up down the right field line. It's going to uh, hit the stands. Really good guy sitting in the press box tonight. Randy Marsh, who is now an umpire supervisor, hadn't seen him. And here's a here's a look at it, and there he is. He's out. Good call. And uh, Randy enjoying his retirement. I was talking to him a while ago, and I said, "No more foul tips off the mask." And he says, "Oh, that's so nice." <laughs> <laughs> and he and uh, Charlie Relliford, two guys that retired kind of young. Millage hits it toward right field, heading back Worth. He makes the catch, and it's a one-two-three inning for Roy Halladay. So one-two-three inning in the first, a one-two. Dealers talking about that Omar Moreno that uh, you know is not the answer to the question, but he I thought he stole a lot of base. He stole 96 in 1980. Wow, that was the year. Of course, the Phillies won the World Series and had a battle of the Pirates a lot that year. And I know he stole a lot of bags. 96. He was one of those annoying leadoff hitters. Big, Seemed like he was always on. Yeah, big tall guy. Played center field. Could really run. Hey, the Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Gene Churn of Penn Argyle, Pennsylvania. The Phillies hit a home run at tonight's ball game. Gene's going to win hundred dollars. And Carlos Ruiz in the air to left field. Last digs Millage. The wind's going to pull that one back. Oh, Makes tonight. the catch right on the edge of the warning track. And last night <laughs> oh. and a lot of other nights, that ball is into the seats. So Zach Duke. 
He just put his head down like, oh, did I get away with one there? That thing is way out. Carlos Ruiz just jumps all over that fastball. And that is a long home run in this ballpark. Probably this coming weekend when it's in the 80s. Carlos retired. Here's one Castro batting eighth. Castro three for six lifetime against Duke. He is making his first start since the 5th of May. And his first start this year at second base. Battling a sore knee. Well, this is part of the versatility we we're talking about uh, with Scott Profrock when he was in here. Uh, that they have these guys and guys like got Lee Rollins. Well, Jimmy doesn't need a rest now, but those kind of guys they set out this year to give more of a rest. They can because of having a guy like Castro around and Polanco. And Charlie has had to use that versatility an awful lot this year. He's wandering a little bit tonight, isn't he? It's cold. Swing and a miss, and Castro is down on strike. Second strikeout for Duke. And two away. Email, text, Twitter, and Facebook. 24 7 CSNPhilly.com is your best source for the latest news on Philly's teams. When and where you want it, be the first to know. Text alerts to 53695 or sign up for alerts at CSNPhilly.com. Here's Roy Halliday hitting 143 this year, four hits and 28 at bats. One nothing Pirates thanks to an RBI double by Andy LaRoche. Off the hand slow roller towards shortstop. Cedeno plenty of time and he retires Halliday to finish off the fills here at the bottom of the third. Fills are retired in order once again. We go to the fourth. It's a one nothing game. June 7th when the Padres are in town. Then the 5th of July celebrating Sarge's birthday when the Atlanta Braves are here. You can order your tickets now for your next Hatfield Dollar Dog Night at the ballpark by logging on to phillies.com. Speaking of celebrating birthdays, happy birthday to that youngster right there. We don't know his name, but we're excited that we're part of his day, Sarge. Well, this can't be fun at the old ballpark. And you can see he's looking, got those eyes, bright eyed. You know, on, on many birthdays, the fanatic would be dumping some popcorn on top of that young man. Well, better him than us. <laughs> we go to the top of the fourth. Andrew McCutcheon leads it off. He struck out his first time up. Joe's butt. And he butted that one. Foul. It hit him as he was leaving the batter's box. And it's 0 1. Hey, every time the Phillies retire the opposing team in order, which Roy Halliday has done twice tonight. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by the Xfinity Triple Play. Your complete lineup for digital TV, high speed internet, and home phone. Figure that when Roy Halladay is on the hill, you're going to get a handful of one, two, three innings. Well, he's been around the plate. He's got pretty good movement on it.
can't be comfortable to hit against tonight, especially with the movement. And a call, strike three, right at the knees. McCutcheon just let it go right on by. Second time he's rung up McCutcheon. And the third strikeout overall for Halliday. Bruce Streckman, the home plate on fire tonight. Good fastball right down at the knees there. Good hard sinker. See that ball starting up high and coming down. Garrett Jones grounded out his first time up. And a good breaking pitch. Foul tipped into the Glover Ruiz. It's 0 and 1. That ball is hit hard right through the hole on the right side, and Jones. As his second hit of the series. And for the Pirates, it's their third hit overall. Pretty good hitting right there. It wasn't a bad pitch. Fastball in on his hands a little bit, and he got him through. That's what this cold weather will do is make sure you get your hands through. Well, Sarge, most of us have played you know, Little League, Babe Ruth, high school ball. And we've used aluminum bats for most of our career. And, you know, they sting and rattle a little bit when you play in cold weather. What's it like to swing a, a wood bat in weather like this? Well, you end up hurting yourself. I mean, your whole body. You get bees in your hand, hit that ball off the end of the bat, hit the ball on the label. The only way it doesn't hurt is if you squared up in that middle uh, part of the bat, right in that sweet hitting zone. To make it worse with a guy like Roy Halladay's on the hill because he does move the ball so much. Inside. Well, no doubt about it. And I would think that it would even hurt more than the aluminum bat. Aluminum and a little bit lighter. It'll make you concentrate a lot more. Well, you should concentrate anyway, but when it's cold, you know you. Don't want to swing at balls usually inside. Polanco could turn two. There's one. Castro's throw in time to retire Church around the horn. A 5 4 3 double play to finish up the top of the fourth for the Pirates. years are older to play please play responsibly and buy Xfinity from Comcast proud partner of the Phillies well we play three and a half here at Citizens Bank Park and got a little bit of a pitcher's duel brewing right now as Zach Duke goes to work against the top of the Phillies order he's faced the minimum has allowed one hit but got a double play to finish off the second Shane Victorino flied out his first time up so he's old for one 
and two for five in the series. Shane has had himself one heck of a month of May. In fact, he's raised his average to 273. He's raised his average as the leadoff hitter up over 300 in this month. And again, he starts play tonight with 32 runs batted in. And he'll eventually move down, and Jimmy Rollins will eventually move into the leadoff spot when Chase comes back after the flu leaves his body. What a lineup. I mean, if you project Victorino in the six or seven hole in this lineup, what a lineup the Phillies will have. And that's what Charlie had hoped once the season started. Yeah, well, you're right about that. They nearly beat that one out. He's retired on the 6 3 put up. Oh, one out here in the fourth. Hey, don't forget this Friday at 9 a.m. Tickets will go on sale for the Philly series against the Toronto Blue Jays. See how Ryan Howard's wearing the road rays and the Blue Jays wearing the home whites. Well, that's the way it's going to look. The Blue Jays will be the home team for that series Friday, June 25th, Saturday, June 26th, and Sunday, June 27th. Again, tickets go on sale 9 a.m. this Friday. Blue Jays will use the designated hitter. The Phillies will use the designated hitter. And speaking of the Jays on the Toyota Major League scoreboard. Blue Jays behind Fred Lewis have defeated the Twins 11 to 2. On the inside corner, it's one ball and one strike. Two and one, the Captain Polanco, who grounded out his first time up. But Duke's one of the kind of pitchers that's a nibbler. Just throws the ball on the outside, kind of doesn't mind pitching behind in the count. Likes to get you on his off speed pitches. Surprises you with a fastball, not a great fastball. He likes to get that fastball out of the zone. So he's doing a pretty good job there with six ground downs. On the hands, a looper towards center. McCutcheon's there, and he makes the catch. Well, Zach Duke this year is on the wrong end of a handful of different categories, Sarge, including number of hits per loud per allowed. He's third in that category. He's also allowed 28 earned runs, which is the sixth most mm. in the National League. Began the year with a 2 0 record and a 2.37 earned run average in his first four starts, but over his last five starts, he's gotten hit a little bit. ERA just under eight. Jimmy pulls it foul, and it's no balls and two strikes. Since 2006, Zach Duke, three losses ahead of Barry Zito for the most. In Major League Baseball. I'm surprised Matt Keane's on that list from San Francisco because yeah. he's been such a good pitcher. And Aaron Harang, if you asked us in 2006 and 2007 if he would be on that list, we would probably say no. Yeah, I think a lot has to do with the team that they're on and a lot of times not getting the support, definitely not getting the defense like you would on other teams. Pretty hard to judge pitching when you don't have. Good defense. That goes hand in hand. Jimmy hits it the opposite way. Garrett Jones on the glove side, a race to the bag, and Jones slides in before Jimmy crosses. Jimmy hustled all the way, and the Phils are retired in order here at the bottom of the fourth. So Zach Duke is retired.
Ryan Domit leads it off here in the top of the fifth inning. Pirates lead it one nothing. Domit scored the only run of this game. He doubled his first time up with two outs. And scored on a double by Andy LaRoche and quickly he's behind 0 and 2. Yeah, he hit that double down the left field line. Almost inside out in that ball, not hitting it hard, but in a good place. And a swing and a miss at a breaking ball. Halliday throws three pitches, one away here in the fifth. And that's his fourth strikeout. Well, that's what you like about him. He makes the adjustment after a hitter ends up getting a hit. Take a look at this pitch. Look like a breaking ball or something away. You can see how he's off balance. The Roach hits one off the end of the bat foul, and it's 0-1. You know, very seldom do you get the same pitch to hit off of Roy Holiday, especially if you hit the ball hard. Next time he regroups on you, and then you have to do the same to him. And he will double up inside. That one is inside off the glove in the foot of Polanco and LaRoche will be safe at first. Hey the Phillies Baseball Academy is open for business. It's baseball for girls and boys ages 6 to 14. There's softball for girls age 6 to 14. Professional coaching skill development for Phillies players coaches and baseball academy instructors It includes uniforms a trip to Citizens Bank Park. You can log on to PhilliesCamps.com for more information. Here's Ronnie Cedeno, who pops the pitch foul. And by the way, they have charged an error to Placido Polanco, his second of the year, to allow Andy LaRoche to be safe at first. Yeah, the ball got on him pretty quick. Looked like it hit his foot. So Daniel popped out to Howard his first time up, so he's 0 for 1. Sarge, most starting pitchers throw three, maybe four different pitches. Roy Halliday seems to have many more than that, and I would assume that most starting pitchers don't throw more than three or four different pitches because it's difficult to throw them. On a major league level. And there's another ball misplayed by Philly's defense. I'm just talking about how good their defense has been behind Halliday. That's going to wind up being the second error of the inning to the Phillies of the fourth of the year to Castro, if indeed that's the way it's scored. That was an easy double play ball, at least it seemed to be. And it is an error charge to Castro. That yeah, looked like he just tried to. Really throw that ball. Oh, it takes a little bad hop is what it did. He got down. He was getting ready to turn. He was from the side as opposed to being right in front of the ball. If you're in front of it, that's how you're going for just one. You're playing that on the side to make that pivot. That ball just jumped right over his glove. So here's Duke with runners on first and second. Phillies think he's going to be bunting in this spot. He's already up in the box, way up in the box. And he squares. Howard's creeping in, and the ball is bunted foul. And it's 0 and 1. Anyway, we were saying that you know most starting pitchers can throw three or four different pitches. Halliday seems to have even more than that. And I would think it's difficult to command on a major league level more than three or four different kind of pitches. Well, what he does on his fastball, he throws a two seamer that goes into a right-handed batter. He throws a cutter. That goes away, which is still a fastball, and he can throw the straight fastball, which he doesn't like to do. Most of his pitches have a lot of movement on it. There you saw there was going to be a slug bunt where he fakes that bunt and gets ready to swing it. He does have that curveball. He can take some off of a pitch. He's just a, a smart pitcher, and I mean he's worked on his craft. You know, to be able to throw balls in certain situations. He doesn't get upset with men on base. He just tries to, again, make another good pitch. That one's butted toward the left of the mound. Halliday throws to third for one. Polanco has his foot kicked out from under him, but they still get the lead runner. And, Sarge, I'm telling you, he was throwing it off the outside part of the plate to try to get Duke to butt it toward that side so he'd have a clear path to the bag. Well, that's just smart. And he jumped on the ball like a cat, knew what he was going to do with it, 
before he got the ball. Now take a look at this. There's that pitch on the outside. Now look, he's already moving toward that way. The only way you're going to bunt the ball, he turns, gives a good, good toss. Here's that slide. Now when he slides like that, you can see off balance. Polanco throwing it off balance there a little bit, throwing it to the side, and Castro doing the right thing, coming off the bag to get the ball. Two outs now in the top of the fifth. Delwyn Young 0 for 2. So. Pirates still have a runner in scoring position. Young is grounded out twice. Once to third. Once to the right side. And he hits one deep but foul. That's going to go into the second deck. Won't be thinking he'll be getting another low fastball. He seems to <laughs> drop the head there on that. See if Roy makes this adjustment and makes sure the ball is in in or else maybe throw something up in the zone. Duke off first, Sedano off second, and a swing and a miss by Young, and it's one and two. The pitch took something off of that, which was a change up. One ball, two strikes the count. Off the end of the bat, slow roller right side. Castro's got it. A few more pitches for Roy Halladay because of the two errors the Phillies committed here at the top of the fifth inning, but he strands two. Phillies Post Game Live presented by Sloan Toyota right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Last of the fifth inning, Pirates lead it 1-0, but 4, 5, and 6 for the Phillies are scheduled to hit against Zach Duke. In fact, Ryan Howard has the only hit for the Phillies. It was a single back in the second. Last night, the Phillies could do no wrong offensively. And tonight, they have only one hit. Well, different pitcher. It's been hitting the spots. Good pitching behind in the count for the most part. Don't want to hit this guy or try and hit him too hard. Just try and center the ball if you can. Ryan hits it hard again. Through the shift and he's got his second hit of the day. Wow. Ball was kind of in on his hands and he's still got a lot on it. Just gives you an indication of how strong he is to be able to hit the ball right through the shift. And when he's going good, that's exactly what he does. Doesn't try and alter his swing. That ball there out over the plate as he puts a pretty good swing on it. Looking against that front foot. And notice he's not even taking a stride. 
A lot of times when he does take that little stride, he gets into some problems. Ryan went up the second with a single. Jason Kitt went down on strikes after that. Jason takes a breaking ball on the outside corner for strike one. It's 0 and 1. Yeah, that's a backdoor a breaking ball. That's a pitch you don't want to swing at. Usually you'll hit that one off the end of the bat. As a hitter, you can't be afraid to hit with two strikes on you against Zach Duke. Well, he is around the plate, and he's just going to kind of tease you. So you got to make sure that you try and pick you out a pitch to hit. If he strikes you out, more so, more of a little surprise that he gets you on, on the strikeout of his pitches. There's good placement on that yep. fastball on the outside part of the plate. He's throwing the ball 88, 89 for his fastball. So that's a usually normally a pitch that you're not going to throw by a major league hitter. Unless he's looking for something else. One and two the count to Jason. And he just flares that one into left field. Bat on the ball and something good has happened for Worth. Phillies have back to back base hits against Duke for the first time tonight. And it's an eight game hitting streak for Jason Worth. Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to hit him too hard. That pitch there, got to give a lot of credit to Jason as he goes out and one hands that ball into left field. A little luck involved with that, too. Spread out. See how he reaches out, but he stayed back. Great extension on that to be able to hit the ball to left field. Then Francisco grounded into a double play his first time up. So he's 0 for 1. Francisco the last two years has hit 15 home runs in each of those seasons. Those 15 home runs last year were a combination between the Phillies and the Indians. Full time with the Indians the year before. Still looking for his first homer here this year. And he bunts. He bunts it foul. Not a bad play. Especially if you haven't been in the game for a while to get those runners over there it shows you that he's playing some team ball and looked as though he did that on his own going more so for the hit as opposed to the sacrifice where you square around and everybody in the ballpark knows you're going to punt the ball. Well, it'll slice back into the seats it's one and two. This has only been Francisco's fourth at bat since his last start in San Francisco. Since his last start, that Powerball has gone off to a couple of different winners. Right now, it's up to $145 million. You can play on Wednesdays and Saturdays. I'm feeling lucky. And lucky for all of us if you hit that. <laughs> it sure would be. Try to check his swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Says the first base umpire, Paul Emmel. One out. Yeah, that's what I mean about the pitcher just kind of teasing you. You got to make sure if you can, you get the ball up. Francisco hasn't played a lot, though, so he's anxious to get in there. Pretty close. I mean, I can see why he was called on that. And, and get that ball up in the zone if you can. Well, now Carlos Ruiz, who fly to deep left his first time up. Carlos came into this ball game with a 464 on base percentage. And we've talked a lot about his on base percentage. He's also been a very good hitter with runners in scoring position. He's got Howard at second. Jason's also on board at first. But because of the knee injury that Carlos had last week in Denver. You know, he missed those three games in Milwaukee. He doesn't have enough at bats to be the leading guy in that on base percentage category right now in the National League. Seven for his last 14 with runners in scoring position. And it's 3 0. Hey, there he is again, just trying to make you hit his pitch. 
not giving in at all to Carlos. Throwing him a change up out over the plate, hoping he would swing at it. I was going to ask you if he was going to get the green light right there. But. Well, in that situation, it's good to go on and and take a pitch. See if you can get the bases loaded. But three and one, he should be looking for his pitch. See that Toyota Major League scoreboard. The Braves lead the Mets two nothing as Ruiz draws the walk to load up the bases. Three base runners in the inning for the Phillies. First walk issued by Duke. Howard's on third. Worth is on second, and Ruiz over at first. A trip to the mound by Ryan Domit. Joe Kerrigan content to just chart those pitches right now because Zach Duke's only thrown 64 pitches. Castro struck out his first time up. See the splits. Included in those numbers with runners on in his first start, Castro's first start during the home opener hit a double to left center field. He doesn't pull too many balls, but he pulled that one and drove in a couple of runs. And he's just trying to put one in play here. Yeah, trying to drive it in that outfield if he can. If he can get it in the outfield, it'll be fine. Driving out there someplace. Well, he's down to the count. One ball and two strikes as he fouls that one off. Nice play by a fan on the Hall of Fame club level. Charlie and Jimmy meeting at this on the street corner, having a conversation in the dugout. <laughs> he doesn't want to swing at this high fastball, and he's been throwing a high fastball to the right-handers. Once he gets two strikes on him and out of the zone, he's been getting them. Off the end of the bat, base hit into center field. Howard's going to score. Worth rounding third. He's being waved home. The throw to the plate by McCutcheon is in time for out number two. Phillies have tied this game up at one. Senator Perlazzo took a chance that Worth could score. And the Phillies have runners on second and third. Yeah, reason that he did that too, you got your pitcher that is actually coming up. And I would have taken a chance myself on that one and held him because McCutcheon center fielder has a pretty good arm. He was playing shallow. He caught that ball came up and throwing usually Sam is going to stop a runner and coming down. Now you can see him coming in now. He catches that in good form and comes up just an easy toss there and plenty of time to get Jason. So that tells me right there when Jason gets thrown out by that far maybe he shouldn't have gone. It's a good point though that you made Sarge. I think that's what ran through Sam's head is that holidays do up. So let's take a chance here. See right there tried to dance across know that he had nowhere to go. What a pitch to Halliday on the inside corner one ball and one strike. Yeah a little bit too far in for me got to give a lot of credit though to Castro line drive had two strikes on him when he did that. Staying up the middle. You know and the other reason too that. Jason kind of froze on that ball because it was a line drive. So he didn't get his normal jump where nobody's going to throw him out normally if he's running from the get go. He had to freeze to see if the ball was going to be caught or not. That outfield assist for McCutcheon is fourth of the year. Two balls, two strikes, the count to Halliday. Joe Madden has been telling his pitchers once interleague play starts, take as many pitches as you possibly can. Run up that pitch count. <laughs> John Russell doing some pacing in the dugout. It's a 1 1 game, the count 3 and 2. And Halliday is rung up, and he's not happy about it. So the Phils do tie it up on the RBI signal by Juan Castro. They strand two 
We go to the sixth. Victorino answered, and it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. We're here for you every step of the way. Well, there's Shane Victorino, who's had a great run as the leadoff batter for the Phillies. Victorino has had himself a, a bobblehead or a bobble figurine during the course of his career. The Phillies unveiled tonight the Roy Halladay bobblehead doll, brought to you by Toyota, the good fo folks at Toyota. Presented this and a great likeness of Roy Halladay and Sarge. I asked you if you had ever had a, a bobblehead when you were a player, or even afterward. And no. you said no. No, don't have one. What do you think of this one? one? Oh, it looks good. It looks great. Got the whiskers and the perfect form from Roy Halladay. The black glove which he has tonight that he's been working with in this ball game. It is a collector's piece. Time is called as. We're trying to close the gate to the bullpen. Well, I, you know, I think about the bobble figurines that the Phillies have had over the years. You know, the Mike Lieberthal one with the catcher's mask that popped off. The Shane Victorino flying Hawaiian bobble figurine. And I just thought that having one of you as a player would have been great because they could have had the bat going up and down, bouncing up <laughs> and down, and a little bit of the twist that you yeah. used to have when you were hitting. They perfected this bobblehead back in the day. They had the bobblehead that was a little bit too big. They had, you know, you didn't want that where that helmet was sitting there, but these, <laughs> the likeness on the bobbleheads that they have now are just about like the player. Millage chops one over the mound. This will be a tough play. Jimmy bare hands, no chance. And an infield single for Lastings Millage. On a swing and butt. And the leadoff batter is aboard for the Pirates. Well, nothing he could do about that. Swinging butt. Once that gets over Roy Holiday's head with that speed there that Millage has, no chance to get him. So Millage is aboard and. Now Andrew McCutcheon stands in. 1-1 one, one game. Pirates scored a run in the second. The Phillies tied it in the fifth. Runner goes. Pitches chopped to the right side. Softly hit. Castro's got to hurry. And he just gets McCutcheon. He almost laid back on that a little bit too much. Well, they're off to the races. First pitch. Trying to make something happen. Might have been your hit and run there. The little soft hands he has there. You can see the speed there, McCutcheon. He has to really get rid of that ball and get rid of it quickly. Bang, bang there, first base. Well, one out now for Garrett Jones. Jones singled his last time up, grounded out his first time to the plate. So he's going to try to cut off that, that hole on the right side with Jones at the plate. He 
delivers a strike on the first pitch. It's 0 and 1. Garrett Jones is the leading RBI guy for the Pirates with a 27 this year. And it's one ball and one strike. <laughs> Little daylight play as Jimmy snuck in behind Lastings Village. Millage is back rather easily. Mentioned the last time Roy Halliday faced the Pirates was back in 2008 against Zach Duke. He went seven innings in that game, struck out seven. The Blue Jays lost that one, one nothing in 12 innings. And that day, said Halliday won seven innings. He would have gotten farther, but the last out of the seventh was a line drive by Niger Morgan that hit Halliday in the head and shot over to Scott Rowland to throw him out. And there's the line for both those pitchers that day. And a line drive, base hit for Garrett Jones. Rounding third, heading for almost Millage. Here's the throw to the plate by Jason Worth on one hop, and Carlos drops the ball. The ball is loose and over to third goes Garrett Jones standing. It's 2 1 Pirates. And Lastings Millage hurt his hand on that play. I don't know if when Carlos swung his body to his left to try to apply that tag, he lost the ball. I don't know if the ball hit Millage's hand or. If Carlos just hit Millage's hand, but Jones wound up all the way over third. Yeah, it might have been a combination of two. Give Jones credit though, hitting a low fastball right through the hole. Worth coming up with a toss, a little bit high. You can see that ball, and again, he actually had it there in the webbing and going over to try and tag him out. Might have had a chance to get him. Well, now the infield is in. It's that kind of game where the Phillies haven't been able to get a whole lot against Zach Duke. Tony Beasley waving Millich home. He peaks. Well, if he holds on to it, I, I'm sure he probably gets called out on that. There's a pop up. Shallow center field. Victorino on the run, battling the wind, still coming in, makes the catch. Jones draws the throw. And it's cut off by Howard. Boy, what a great play and with that win Victorino coming in and battling that win. Don't want to come in too hard. Obviously the most important thing before you're able to throw it is to catch it. Now here's that throw again. Now he has the ball never had control of the ball. And that ball actually hit Millage hits him there in the chest. He's calling himself safe. And in pain. That left hand went right under the shin guard on the left knee of Carlos Ruiz, and those fingers were were pointed outward, so he may have just jammed it. Here's Doman, and he hits one in the air to right field. Towering shot caught up in the wind. It pulls it back. Worth is there, makes the one-handed catch. The Pirates, though, take the lead here in the sixth. Millage scores from second on a base hit for Garrett Jones. They lead it 2-1.
Falcons will have full details coming up on Toyota Sports Site, but now we send it back to the Phillies game. All right, Amy, thank you very much. So good news for the Sixers. They get the second pick overall. The Washington Wizards will get the first pick in this year's NBA draft. And the Nets, the New Jersey Nets, will have the third pick overall. The Nets had the highest percentage of or the best opportunity to get the number one pick. They only had 12 wins last year in the NBA, but they will get the third pick overall. John Wall of Kentucky will most likely be the number one overall pick. And there's some pretty talented players that will follow him. Demarcus Cousins from the Kentucky Wildcats is there as well. And Eric Turner from the Ohio State Buckeyes is in that mix for one of the top picks. And Shane Victorino with speed to boot is able to reach out a bunt single. And he's aboard to start the bottom of the sixth inning. Now it almost doesn't matter where the third baseman plays. He can play up. And he was a little bit. But when he bunts the ball and in that area, it just almost hugged the line there. See how this starts off? Now watch how it just dead. He knows he has no chance at all to throw Victorino on. So Shane's aboard. Let's see if he'll take advantage of Ryan Doman's struggles behind the plate. It's a little harder to steal on Zach Duke because he's a left-hander. Blanco takes an off-speed pitch low. One ball and no strikes. Blanco tonight grounded to third. He's also flying out to center. So 0 for 2 in the ball game. Shane has stolen six bases this year. He's been caught just one time. Phillies stole two bags last night against the Pirates. A little slide step, and he delivers a strike at 87 miles an hour. It's one and one. Yeah, that's the other way that you stop base stealers is. The slide step where you don't pick your foot up as high as you would on a regular wind up or regular when you're in the stretch. Just barely pick it up and go right to the plate. Usually you don't have as much on that ball. Side two and one. Almost looked at with that pitch, Sarge, that Duke was aiming it because yeah. he had the slide start. And off speed pitch as the ball kind of tailed away a little bit up and away. Pretty good pitch for Polanco there, and it's even now two balls and two strikes. The Phillies, as we've talked about, it, have really mashed the ball during this month of May. Offensively, they lead the league in many different categories overall, but they're just blowing everybody away in a lot of categories here in the month of May. And since Jimmy Rollins returned, Jimmy's in the on deck circle, or in games that Jimmy's played this year, Phillies are averaging near, nearly eight runs per game. The 2 2 pitch in the air down the left field line. He probably got out in front a little too much on that one, and it's foul. Well, there's that high fastball coming up and in. Trying to surprise Polanco on that pitch. Reading Duke at all here, Sarge? Well, I haven't been reading him, reading him good. There hasn't been a whole lot of guys on to try and steal or the right ones, but normally if he gets his jump, you're reading them. The guys with speed will go on and go. 
Victorino doesn't go. The pitch is hit foul again by Blanco. And it holds even two balls and two strikes. Blanco trying to get it in the gap somewhere. Just a base hit. Hopefully Victorino can get over to third base. Cut that one right over the outside part of the plate. Polanco is retired for out number one. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Toyota. Toyota's national sales event is going on now. Hurry into your Toyota dealer today. Buy Southwest Airlines. Go to Southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. Buy McDonald's. McCafe, your day at McDonald's with a new McCafe frappe. And buy your participating Philadelphia area Chevy dealers. Visit ChevyDealer.com. One out, here's Jimmy Rollins. 0 for 2 tonight. Still batting with a runner at first base. Duke steps off and Victorino stands his ground. Now he creeps back. It is not often this year that the Phillies have been held to just one run or fewer in a game. In fact, during this month of May, they've scored just one run just twice. Jimmy pulls it toward third. LaRoche waits back on it. Still has time to go to second for one. And Victorino is out because Young was on the exchange to try to turn that double play, according to the second base umpire, Bill Hahn. So two away here in the sixth. Yeah, I think he caught that on that and was just trying to exchange it. Off speed pitch as he got J. Rowe to roll over on that ball there. You see now he catches it. Now there's the exchange. Not able to get him there. He catches it. Now he gets ready to throw. That is an out correct call. Ryan Howard's two for two. He has scored a run. He lays off a breaking ball and it's one ball and no strikes. He has that slow breaking ball, but what he's done is he's had it in a good spot. On the right handers, he's kept it on the outside part of the plate. Left handers, as you can see with Ryan Howard, has that ball breaking down and away. This is where Jason Worth comes in, where Ryan Howard should maybe see a pretty good pitch. Jason usually handles left handers, doesn't want to throw to him with men on base. Ryan lines it off the end of his bat. It's another hit. It's a three hit night for Howard. Rollins stops at second, and the Phillies have two runners aboard with two away. Well, the Cleveland Indians will be in town Tuesday, June 22nd at 7.05 to start a three-game series. In fact, it's six in a row against the American League, beginning with that series against the Indians. Two 7.05 games, one 105 game. That's a Citizen Bank business person special. Get your tickets now by logging on to Phillies.com. Oh, a very cold Joe Kerrigan going out to the mound to talk to Zach Duke. Joe's got the, the jacket on, the hoodie underneath that. This is his first visit to the mound. Yeah, just kind of going over how they're going to pitch. Jason Worth. Kerrigan, one of those pitching coaches that has a game plan on every single hitter that's in the league. See what Duke did last year right before the All-Star break. Three runs and eight innings of work tonight. One run in five and two thirds. 15 this is pitch count on the 10th of July a season ago 87 so far in tonight's game Phillies did a better job the last couple of innings forcing them to throw pitches yep. they had not done that in the first couple of innings tonight which is very unlike the Phillies this season 
They have been so good in making the starters work, getting into that bullpen. Jason lays off, and it's one and zero. Jason's one for two. Now Duke he goes soft early in the count, and then usually throws a little bit harder when it becomes two and two, or trying to trick you with the fastball in or out. Rollins is dancing off second. And that caught the eye of Zach Duke. Uh, he can take as much as the second baseman. Don't have to worry about Cedeno if he breaks to the bag. Sam Palazzo, third base coach, will let him know. Down low, 2 0. Oh. So that split of Jason and Zach. Jason does have a home run. Against Zach Duke during his career has not homered against a lefty this season. If he hits it out to left, he's going to really have to get a hold of it tonight. Takes it outside, three and up. Now this ought to be a situation where they turn him loose and let him go on and hit three and zero. Oh. He's got to be patient, and I'm sure Kevin told him, "Hey, listen, you got another right-hander in Francisco." Just don't give in to Jason Road. Outside ball four. Boy, it almost looked like he was pitching around it. It really did. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure when Kerrigan went out there seeing just that because he'd rather pitch to a, a hitter that hasn't been playing a lot, and Francisco has not. None of those pitches to Jason Worth are really close, and three and oh was even further away. Ben Francisco has struck out. He's grounded into a double play. The bases are loaded here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Leafs trail it by one. And that one's low. One ball and no strikes. Five straight out of the strike zone for Duke. Still got to look for his pitch, though. It's not a situation where you just want to give in and let him throw a strike unless you go to 3 and 0. Oh. Thought that was a pretty good pitch there by Duke. Fastball that seemed to be right by the knees. Take another look at it. Yeah, I think he might have got away with one, but that's okay. They miss him every now and then. <laughs> Pulled hard toward third. Backheaded by LaRoche. Takes it to the bag himself, and Zach Duke. Works out of a jam here in the sixth inning for the Phillies. No runs, two hits, three men left. We go on to the seventh in a one run game.
Top of the seventh inning, Andy LaRoche leads it off against Roy Halliday. Halliday's only allowed five hits through the first six, but he trails it two to one. It'll be LaRoche, Ronnie Cedeno, then the pitcher spot for the Pirates. They have bullpen action. Zach Duke's been really good tonight for Pittsburgh. Roy Halliday has been equally as good. Andy LaRoche is one for two. He doubled and drove in a run his first time up, reached on an error his last time up, and he rolls this one to shortstop and is retired by Jimmy Rollins. Time now for the Verizon Wireless Game Summary. A lot of times on a night like this, it's advantage pitcher if they can get it over. Because it's not a good night to hit as cold as it is here, and the pitching has been very good. Zach Duke has gotten out of a few jams and has bested Roy Halliday to this point by a run. Uh, as Tom mentioned, LaRoche had knocked in a run. They're going to get Evan Meek up, a hard throwing right hander who's done a good job for them. So Meek is firing. Ronnie Cedeno is up. Phillies with a runner thrown out at the plate, and the Pirates with a runner almost thrown out at the plate. So that's how close this game has been to them. Oh, and since you last left us, Wheels, Halliday still has an awful lot of movement on his pitches. Yeah, well, he's doing just fine out there. Looks like the fielders are having a little trouble catching the ball at times tonight. Phil's defense committed three errors behind Halliday in this game. Polanco has one. Castro has one. And, and really none have factored into the scoring unless you figure that if Ruiz had caught that ball at the plate, um, they'd have had the runner Millage at home plate, and that was going to be close. It's hard to tell. How about that? Team that doesn't make a whole lot of errors. Opposite way for Sedano. He just reached out and he poked that in for an extra base hit. He can run pretty well. Worth pulls it out of the corner. Sedano's going to hold up at second. And the Pirates have a one out double by Ronnie Sedano. And this may get Zach Duke out of the game. Yeah, it is. They're going to hit for him now, especially with one out and a runner in scoring position. He's given them six good innings here tonight. Sedano just. Dropped the bad head on that one and flared at the right field. No, whether they'd have hit for him if uh, you know if he had just gotten to first base or not. He or Moore was out there, so you know they were thinking about it no matter what. Well, you and Muir are hitting 157, but this has been a real struggle for him. Hitless in his last 27 at bats. Well, this is a guy who played against the Phillies. For the Rays in the World Series a few years ago. See his numbers against Halliday, five for 23 against him. They were in the same division in the American League. And it's one ball and one strike to him. So Daniel's on second. I'm not saying a manager's job is easy by any stretch, but you know, Zach Duke has been really sharp tonight, and he leaves after throwing 94 pitches. You're leading by just one, and you, I guess when you're playing the Phillies, you're thinking, well, we got to get some more runs, even though your pitcher is doing real well. You'd probably like to keep him out there and not go to the bullpen. Tapper right back to the mound. Sedano holds it second. And Ewan Muro, who's battling a sore hamstring, has no chance to beat that throw over to first. Well, time now for the Coors Light Freeze Cam. This is the go ahead run of this ball game. Lasting Spillage scoring from second base. And that would have been a close play if Ruiz could have hung on to him, but at that point he had already lost the ball. And Coors Light Freeze Cam. Two outs, Delwyn Young, the batter, 0 for 3. He's grounded out three times. In fact, everybody in the infield's touched the ball except for Jimmy Rollins and Young's at bats. He's Duke seated on the bench. Six innings, five strikeouts, six hits allowed, just one run. Well, he's done that before to the Phillies. Mentioned at the beginning of the game. He used to get in the games with his left handers and there's Orzolani, this guy, and uh, and have some tough nights with the Pirates. I think another reason why they took him out, besides what you were just talking about, Tom, is he's had to work out of a bunch of jams tonight. 
and he did his job and I think they figured you know they got what they could get out of it. Outside it's two and one a young managers factor that in a lot of times into the, into decisions on how much they've had to work and get out of jams if he had an easy 94 pitches didn't have to work real hard you know which would be hard to have an easy 94 pitches in six innings. Look like they pitched around worth last inning with thought first the safe all that all the speed stuff. And then uh, Francisco hit that thing right on the nose off Duke, but Adler Roach, the third baseman. Two balls, two strikes, the count to Young. A big pitch here. And Roy Halliday and, and Marie's want to, don't want to make a mistake because they don't want to give up a two out run now. They've worked this hard in this inning to keep this to one run and they're down to a strike now. Yeah. yeah they just can't quite figure out what they want to do. He threw a curveball. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard. Mets of the Braves are now tied at two. Ike Davis and Jeff Francoeur of homework for the Mets. Mets are two and seven in their last nine games. And again, Roy Halladay and Carlos Ruiz have a conversation on the mound. Last outing for Halladay was his only outing this year that he didn't get through the seventh inning. And he's at six and two thirds at tonight's ball game. And and uh, and this is so important. This. You know when you've worked as hard as they have to get to this point they just don't want to make a mistake here. Not be on the same page. Oh. He tried to run that fastball back. Hasn't done a whole lot of that tonight. And a little comeback sinker it looked like. Hey, there it is. And pulled inside. Well that was that was Halliday and Ruiz finally got to that after all that off speed stuff stuff away. Uh, from Young, and then they decided that little comeback sinker and froze him with it, but didn't get the call. Three and two, the count to Young with a runner at second base. Hit hard towards second. Castro scoops it up, and Young is retired. So Halliday strands a runner in scoring position here at the top of the seventh for the Pirates. No runs, one hit.
answer. Wheels, who is the Pirates' all-time leader in stolen bases? Well, you said I'm not going to know, so I won't. Uh, Omar Moreno was my guess, uh, but uh, I'm going to say Honus Wagner because of the card last night. Wheels, Honus Wagner is incorrect. Oh. Wow. It is the legendary Max Carey. But 690 Honest, stolen bases. There you go. Uh, Honest, I thought Honest Wagner stole a lot of bases, but, you know, Max Carey, I know the name, but would have never been able to guess that one. Did you think Patsy Donovan? No. Tommy but, Leach? But I did think Omar Moreno. Yes, you did. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. And thanks for playing Dodge Stump the Fans. Hey, congratulations to any fan that got that one. Evan Meek is the new pitcher for the Pirates. I think the Pirates have are strikeouts in their bullpen, and you see that. This guy right here is more than a strikeout per innings pitch, and they have a few guys like this. Ruiz hits it sharply, but Cedeno moves just a step to his right. And Meek's got the first out here in the inning. Well, these lucky fans are tonight's Citizen Seven. They will each receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. I wonder if they would hit for Halliday in this inning where they're going to bring Dobbs out right now to bat for Castro. Yeah, this is the spot in a game that even Halliday talked about in spring training that you know, he wants to become a better hitter because he wants to stay in a ball game. This is also the spot he talked about in the offseason when he came over here. That in the National League, he won't pitch as many complete games as he right. did in the American League just because of these situations where you may hit for him. Now, they haven't yet, as Danny's bias gets up, but there will be cases where you have to hit for your pitcher in the National League, where in the American League, of course, you didn't. And you may even lose a game by a run, but you get a complete game. See, Dobbs just one hit as a pinch hitter this year, overall hitting 182. And he takes a pitch low it in, one ball and no strikes. Evan Meek is fastball, curveball. And there was a breaking ball right there. He throws hard fastball and a hard curveball. Pretty good pitch for Dobbs to hit there, and he fouls it off. It's one and one. Evan Meek has 10 straight scoreless appearances for the Pirates. A Pirates bullpen. That has a collective earned run average of 5.24. Yeah. They've been hit around, but as we mentioned, they have strikeouts out there. This is something surprising, Wills, that I didn't realize until this series got underway. You know, if the, the Pirates win tonight, they took two of three from the Cubs this past weekend. They win tonight. It would be their first road road trip with a winning record since 2007. Wow. Gary Darling says that Dobbs held up this way. You know they've fallen on hard times, but that's that's an incredible step. I can remember the years when we were just praying around here to finish 500. <laughs> you know, of course, these guys have been doing that for a long time. Two balls and two strikes the count to Dobbs. Meek is ready. And Dobbs takes it inside. It's three and two. It's 97. That's on a pretty quick. On a 40 degree night. Yeah. There's Roy Halliday on deck. Folks are not taking a picture of the back of his head. They're taking a picture of the fanatic who's on the dugout. Three two pitch. Down low ball four. Now he may leave him in the game now to try and bunt him. Yes. See if Halliday is going to stay in with only one out. Now there are two outs they're going to hit for him, I think. But with one out, Charlie's going to take a shot here and uh, leave him in the ball game and see if he can bunt Dobbs in the scoring position and tie the game with a hit. Nobody lingering in that well right there. Good job by Greg Dobbs, too. That was a tough at bat. Andy LaRoche, the third baseman, is playing way in on the grass. Holiday tonight is 0 for 2. Looking for his first National League sacrifice. And a throw over to first. Dobbs didn't have a big lead. Well, there's no reason to throw over there uh, to see if he's going to square because he had. He 
bunts at it. They appeal. Oh. They said he pulled it back. I thought he bunted at it. I did too. Let's see if he jabs at this. Close. It looks like he jabbed at it. Doesn't, doesn't take much if you. He, that, that's an example right there of of how fast that ball gets to home plate when you see something like that. He bunts it foul and it's one ball and one strike. Even, even players when they come up here and, and you know work upstairs or watch games forget how tough it is down there. A little less than a year since his last sacrifice bunt. And he bunts it foul off of Domit. Well, you see, Halliday's a work in progress. He's trying to get better at this, but his technique is still not real good. He's, he's stabbing a little bit. Ideally, now he's going to go talk to Sam Perlazzo. Ideally, and they use that term, let the bat catch the ball. And I think that's a great way to describe it because you have to somehow be relaxed, have the bat out there, have it in a certain plane, and then just let the ball hit the bat. But when you stab at it like that, the odds are you're going to either foul it or miss it. Over there to see if he's going to bunt, but he had square. I say, I think Charlie's going to try to trick him a little bit and send Dobbs. All they take six two at two. Because sometimes you run and bunt, and the idea of that play is to try to get the guy all the way to third. Bunts at it and misses. Halliday is down on strikes for the second time tonight, so Dodge remains at first. And two away here in the seventh. You haven't done much of that. You're just trying to, trying to do it over in this league. A guy's throwing that hard. So Polanco waiting on deck. Shane Victorino will be the batter with two down, two down here in the seventh. Evan Meek on in relief of Zach Duke, who with the first six innings for the Pirates. Duke allowed five hits and one run. Victorino, one for three, but it is last time. Torino with 32 RBIs. He is the most RBIs among leadoff hitters in the league. And he's kind of bared down as the game has moved on. Average up over 300. And he takes a fastball for a strike on the outside corner. It's one ball and one strike. Playing slightly to pull in the outfield. And really shallow in left field of Millage. There you see Millage is, is counting on the wind, knocking the ball down to Victorino's offside, and that he can't hit the ball over his head. But in a one run game, you know, you'd rather be in front of you than over your head. One and two the count to Victorino. Shane is third in the league in RBIs with 32. He has four straight multi hit games and has one hit tonight. Got Dobbs on first. Just hoping to keep this inning alive against the hard throwing Evan Meek.
the hands. Slow chopper towards second. Young's got it, and Victorino is retired. So the Phils do get a base runner, but he's stranded. We've completed seven here at Citizens Bank. Blanco won a couple of gold gloves when he was in the American League. Aston Village leads it off against Roy Halliday here in the eighth. Halliday, so far tonight, has allowed two runs on just six base hits. Village pops it up. Short right. Polanco is over. Wynn's going to kick it back towards foul territory. Howard dives, and he can't come up with it. Just Man, did the wind play a role in that one? Well, it's obviously blowing in, as we said, because we can feel it up here all night, right in your face. And so it blew it over there into foul territory. But it's just another example. They're just not getting, making it easy for Halliday tonight. Here's Ryan Howard. It had trouble with him. Then it did finally hit his glove, but he's out of control when he dove for it. And, you know, his hands aren't real soft at this point. That's a tough play. Hit off the heel. A lot of outs tonight have not been recorded. Uh, by the Phillies defense behind Halliday. So as a result, he's thrown a lot more pitches. New life for Millage. And it's two and one. They're getting uh, Joel Hanrahan up in the bullpen. I mentioned they have some bullets out there. Strike uh, strikeout guys. And he's another one. And then Dotel, their closer, can come in with strikeouts. The Phillies are getting uh, JC, Ro JC Romero up in their pen. Toward second base. That was a pitch that was just cutting away from Millage the whole time. Polanco retires him. One out here in the eighth inning. Hey, tonight on Sports Night, it highlights an exclusive interviews from this ball game, plus the Flyers Game 2 Eastern Conference Final Showdown against the Canadians. Get all the new Philly fans need to know on Toyota Sports Night tonight at 10 on Comcast Sportsnet. Flyers lead it 2 0 right now over the Canadians. Wheels, they have scored 12 unanswered goals, the Flyers have, since trailing the Bruins 3 0 in game seven. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, I, I would think it is. That's uh, some kind of goaltending. Well, the 12 straight goals ties the, the team playoff record, which they set back in 1980. There's a flare off the end of the bat by McCutcheon, and it drops in in front of Victorino. So McCutcheon, who had been 0 for 7 in the series, has his first hit. Now you have to keep an eye on him. Yeah, they would like nothing more than add another run here. Now, whether or not they'll let him run or not with a hole opening Jones a pull hitter up, we'll see.
there. Jones two for three. He's got an RBI single. That was in the sixth inning. Toss over to first. McCutcheon who has stolen 12 bases this year. Well, how are they very much aware of McCutcheon who's a guy who is the guy who can run in their lineup and to make sure that he doesn't get a free run over there if he is going to go. There's a base hit for Jones. That's his third hit of the night. McCutcheon flies over to third. He'll get there. See, that's that idea leaving that hole open and whether you steal or not you leave it open for a pull hitter like Jones and he got the job done for them. See right here you get all this room if you're a left handed hitter you know it's just such a great position to be in if you're thinking about pulling and here it comes and he pulls it you don't even have to hit it that hard and you get it through and then you have a fast runner like McCutcheon he'll first to third for you and that's why a lot of times that situation a manager will put a don't steal on Ryan Church is over three and he works it away and it's one ball and no strikes. Church one for nine against Roy Halliday in his career. And a swing and a miss and a change up, but it's one and one. Cutchins on third. And Jones is on first with one out here in the top of the eighth inning, a one run game. Towards second base could be two. Polanco has one. Rollins, two. Four, six, three on the double play. And Roy Halliday works out of another jam. This one here in the eighth inning, he keeps it at a one run deficit. We go to the bottom. Tuesday, June 8th at 7.05. It's a three-game series. Second trip in for the fish this season. You can get your tickets now by logging on at Phillies.com. First, though, the Phils have this game against the Pirates to finish up, then two against the Cubs, and three against the Red Sox this weekend. Roy Halladay, 16 of the 24 outs he's recorded tonight have come on ground balls. He's also got a couple double plays. Off the bat of Ryan Church. Well, you see, one of the many reasons that make him such a great pitcher is he he'll bend, but he doesn't break a lot of times. He's out there grinding, 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 trying to get Church to hit a ground ball, and he got it. 
And it was right at uh, Polanco. Well, now he'll lean on his offense to try to get some runs. We said the Phillies have only scored one run in a game in May twice. Joel Hammerhand, the new pitcher, and he fires a strike, and it's 0-1. We're going to get Javier Lopez up in the bullpen, too. The you know, funky left-hander. Hammerhand is a guy that tried to close rooms with Washington, and that didn't work out real well. Phillies used to hit him hard. Blanco down on the count. No balls and two strikes. Blanco does not have any at bats against Hammerhand. You see his numbers. This is already a 17 game. We didn't see him much in spring training. The 0 2 pitch to Polanco. Hit on the ground toward third. Glove by LaRoche. He was shaded toward the line, but still was able to get over to make that play. It wasn't it that hard? Right, exactly. He, they had him guarding the line to stay away from an extra base hit. And if he hits that hard, it's going to go into left field for a single. But he got jammed. One out for Jimmy Rollins, who's 2 for 11 against Hammerhead in his career. Jimmy is hitless in three at bats tonight. Roach is creeping in a third just to take the bunt away from Rollins. Boy, there is a huge gap in left center field. Not that Jimmy ever sprays the ball to left center as a left-handed hitter, but Millage is way over toward the line. Well, they're all playing so shallow, too. They're playing the conditions right now. You never see that. Jimmy does bunt. You never see that in a one-run game on the road that your outfielders are going to play that shallow. But they're playing so shallow because they don't think somebody, the guy like Rollins on his offside, is going to hit it over their head. Now look how much space there is between the cushion and the center field wall here in the eighth inning. I mean, that looks like there's a runner at third, nobody out in the tie game in the ninth, you know, and you're trying to play that kind of defense. One and two the count. And it was a slider from Hanrahan. But it, the wall, ball is obviously getting knocked down so much tonight in the outfield. That they can afford to do that. You know, the one ball the Phillies have really hit hard tonight. See those flags blowing straight in was that ball Ruiz hit early in the game, would have been a home run almost every night here, but not tonight. Seven from Hanrahan. Yeah, they have hard throwers that they can bring into this game. They're, they're right handers. There's Javier Lopez. He's not a hard thrower necessarily, he's more funky. But they have one more left out there in Octavio Dotel. And he will most likely pitch the ninth, not Lopez, but Dotel. Right. Two and two, the count to Rollins. And Jimmy rips it down the right field line. Just foul. Oh. Yeah. This time said he ripped it down the right field line. And let's see how foul that how much foul this is. About a foot and a half. See Garrett Jones giving as much body language as he could to get his foul. Let's see what kind of pitch Jimmy gets here with the count even two and two. Fastball popped up. Shallow left center. Sedeno heads back. And two gone here in the eighth inning. Hey, Thursday night, the Comcast Network has total Flyers Eastern Conference Finals coverage. Get Rick Tockett's expert analysis and exclusive team interviews on Flyers pregame and postgame live. Thursday night before and after game three versus the Canadians only on the Comcast Network. It is three nothing Flyers across the street at the Wachovia Center. What a turn of events. Pretty good run. By Howard's three for three. Well, and you notice they didn't bring the left hander into pitch to him because, you know, John Russell's hoping right here with Worth on deck, a right handed hitter, that Ryan Howard doesn't somehow beat these conditions and tie the game with a home run. He's figured it'll be a hit. 
if he gets on, not a homer. And then you have your right handed pitcher still to pitch to Jason Worth. And that's what I mean about playing the conditions. I think if it were a warm night and you'd go left left here and not uh, not take a chance on a home run to tie the game. But even Ryan Howard's going to have trouble hitting one tonight. Ryan is one for nine against Hanrahan. And that one was just as Wheel said, just a single, it was just a base hit. Well, he sees a little bit late on Hanrahan's fastball right now. One ball, two strikes the count. They just got a piece of that breaking pitch, that slider at 86. He's come in throwing strikes. Meek came in throwing strikes. And so far they've gotten the job done. Nobody out in the Phillies bullpen either. <laughs> this guy keeps pumping them and <laughs> Ryan Howard keeps fouling them off. Swing and a miss and a slaughter. The ball is kicked up the first base line, and Howard is just thrown out. I don't know how the ball went up the first base side like that. If Ryan kicked it or if Doman kicked it, but it became an obstacle for Doman to track down. And it's a one, two, three, eighth inning for Joel Hanrahan. So the strikeout of Howard finishes off this eighth inning. Well, really, the throw by Doman finished. Top of the ninth inning, 2-1. Pirates lead it, but Roy Halladay is not done yet. He'll begin the inning against Ryan Domit. It'll be Domit, LaRoche, and Ronnie Cedeno, 6-7-8. and eight. The first pitch off the glove of Ruiz, it's 1-0. Oh. Here's the strikeout of Ryan Howard. Look what happens here after he strikes out. Lands under his foot right there. And somehow Ryan got a piece of it and kicked it toward... The right of the mound. Yeah, it's in the burden, so the play continues. See right there, it just happens to hit his foot. And they're gonna say he did not kick that on purpose. Which he did. Two and one the count to Dobin. Threw a good breaking ball. Henry Hand kept throwing all those mid-90 fastballs and then threw a breaking ball in the dirt that he chased. That's a good pitch by Halliday. It's two and two. Brian Dolma just passed Manny Sanguin on the Pirates' all time list for home runs with 48. Manny Sanguin was a pretty good catcher. 
during the seventies with the Buckos. Domit lines one to left, and he's aboard with the leadoff single, and that is his second hit of the night. You know how long they'll go with Halliday in this ninth inning, up to 115 pitches. Hey fans, if you're 55 or over, not doing anything on Thursday, June 3rd from 11:30 to 2:30. Well, it's the Phillies Alumni Luncheon. That's right. Highlights include a baseball talk with Pat Gillick, Bill Giles, Dallas Green, Greg Lozinski, Darren Dalt, Andy Musser, Bill Campbell, and Phillies Director of Scouting Marty Wolliver. The cost is $75. As the runner goes, diving stop by Polanco, and he throws out the roach. Up to second goes Doman. Anyway, for more information, you can call 215-463-1000 or log on to phillies.com slash alumni luncheon. Pirates trying to play a little hit and run there, and it almost worked. It just is a good job by Polanco. Infielders are taught when a runner goes like that, come forward before you break. Uh, not sure who was covering on that play, but you're supposed to. Let's see. See, see him just kind of hanging around there, and he didn't break immediately towards second base. You break immediately, then you open up all that room there, and that ball would have gotten through even though it was hit weakly. I think Jimmy was covering, though. Jimmy looked like he was heading yeah. over, yeah. Ronnie Cedeno has a hit in three official at bats. Doubled his last time up against Halliday. Shows Bunt and bunts that one foul. Oh, no, they're not. He's going to say that Ruiz picked it up and tagged him. He's out. It sure was out in front of the plate. I, well, I thought that the whole plate umpire put his hands up to signal foul. Yeah. Wait, I guess he, he did. did. He did call a foul right away. I agree with you. And he fit, put his fist out saying that. I'm not sure what he did. Maybe he put, his, put out that he needed more baseballs. He called foul right away. And then. And he called it? strike. Maybe it was a strike. And then he called, called Maybe strike. that's what it was. And then he looked over in the dugout and said, I need some more pelotas. I don't understand that signal. <laughs> I went to the count to Cedeno. Jeff Clement is in the on deck circle for the Pirates. Has been durable. 119 pitches tonight. The 0 2 pitch to Cedeno. And it's fouled off, so Cedeno will get another hack at Roy. He's at 120 right now with 39 balls. A lot of foul balls tonight. And as we mentioned, the Phillies have had some uh, mistakes, made errors, and he's had to pitch some more batters and throw more pitches. Swing and a miss. He got Cedeno. Two outs. First strikeout for Halliday since the fifth inning. This season against the Pirates. Coming into tonight's ball game. Team ERA 5.80. Now that's better in the month of May. And it was up above six in the month of April. They've allowed five runs or more 22 times. Ten runs or, or more seven times. We really didn't look for this to be a high scoring game. Especially with Halliday going for the Phillies, but Zach Duke has pitched well against the Phillies on a night like this. You don't usually see a whole lot of runs. And the wind is, you know, knocking the ball down in the outfield, so you're not going to get homers. And they had a few chances at Duke, and his credit got out of it. 2 0 the count to Clement. Pitch had hitting. Run, had a runner thrown out at the plate. We still have one more shot, and it'll be. Against uh, Octavio Dotel, who's firing out there in their bullpen now. That guy used to have some arm, boy. When he first came up, wow. Well, when he's healthy, he still does have a pretty good arm. Remember when the, the uh, Astros had that guy and Wagner? Those were some bullets coming into the game. Three balls and no strikes, the count to Clement. Most pitches thrown in the majors this year is 130 by a starting pitcher. We saw that, didn't we? We saw it on Saturday. Marvison. 
tonight. Neither team has really lit it up with runners in scoring position. The Phillies haven't had a whole lot of runners in scoring position. Doma to at second base. The count three and one to Clement. And there's ball four. Two runners on. Charlie may just decide that's enough. And he is wandering toward the stairs and he's coming up. And Halliday kicks it a little dirt. I think he's going to be able to talk his way in to stay in this ball game. I think Charlie's going to signal before he gets to the bow. <laughs> I think he's got to Hundred twenty-six pitches for Halliday in this game. Two runners on, two outs here in the ninth inning. I don't know. Charlie's not grabbing the baseball. <laughs> he's going to keep him in the game. <laughs> Crazy. Last time Charlie did that, it paid off. Holiday threw one pitch and got Matt Holiday to end an inning. Let's see if he can throw one pitch to get Delman Young. Delman Young tonight is 0 for 4. He's grounded out four times. Most pitches Holiday's ever thrown in a game is 133. That was last year against the Angels. And there's number 127. Well, probably told him this is it. You, know, you don't get this guy, I gotta get you out of here. Two and oh, the count to Young. There's no day off. And now he'll be coming back in his regular turn, Sonny. Probably against Josh Beckett. The way he lines up right now. So coming on first, Dolman oh, just saw it second. Two balls, no strikes, the count to Young. And there's the strike, it's two and one. This is Brown is trying to get behind Halliday here to get him through this ninth inning. Yeah, they're losing this game two to one. It's almost like they're winning two to one and he's trying to get through this game. This is this is really great support for Halliday. They've been sitting on their hands a lot tonight for two reasons. Nothing much has happened and it's cold. <laughs> will be off with this pitch three and two two outs and here they come to their feet what's left of the crowd of more than 45,000 the 60th straight sellout here at Citizens Bank Park runners go swing and a miss he got him on a curve Halliday Strands two more this time in the ninth inning. He preserves this one run deficit and gives his team an opportunity in the bottom of the ninth inning. This is a heck of a hook to finish off.
10:30 Eastern on the Comcast Network. Roy Halladay, nine innings, and he's hoping that his offense can get something cooking here in the bottom of the ninth inning to take him off the hook. Maybe send this one into extras. Charlie Emanuel left him in. He's thrown more pitches than anybody else in the majors this year. Nine innings, nine hits, six strikeouts. And Jason Worth leads it off against Octavio Dotel. And there's power against power right there. And it's 0-1. Dotel for his career came into the season with 83 saves. He has seven this year, so 90 overall. When he was just starting out, he was throwing in the high 90s. Still throwing in the low 90s. And he's ahead 0-2. Against Worth, who is hitless at just one at bat against Hotel. Raul Ibanez is out of the on deck circle. He's got good numbers against Hotel, just three at bats. And a swing and a miss, three straight fastballs, one away. Six in a row retired by the Pirates' bullpen. Well, he just came after him with a fastball here. Rising fastball up and away. Jason Worth swings and misses. Ben Francisco was 0 for 3 tonight. Now Ibanez will pinch hit for him. Raul's 2 for 3 against Dotel. Talk about the strikeouts they have. Meek had one, Anrahan one, and now Dotel one. And he's ahead 0 and 1. He's thrown four straight strikes. So seven outs they've recorded out of the bullpen, three strikeouts. And they can get you into a spot. The Pirates. Don't win a whole lot of games. If they can get you into a spot like this, they have a chance to beat you with nothing happens. Toward first base. Ooh, took a wicked hop. Jones stayed with it. And there are two outs. The two away, and it's left up to Carlos Ruiz. Roy Halliday, who has thrown nine innings tonight. In six and one, an earned run average of 1.59. And one last hope for the Phillies, and it's Carlos. And he takes a pitch low. It's one and zero. Oh. Guy is a horse, boy. I'll tell you. <laughs> yes. When he did the night, he pitched out of a bunch of jams again tonight. He just haven't hit one. That one's in the air to left field. The wind will keep it in the yard. Lastings Millage comes under it, and Octavio Dotel finishes off the Phillies here in the ninth inning. One, two, three. A very easy ninth for Octavio Dotel. And Roy Halladay's 53rd career complete game ends in a one run loss. The Phillies drop game two of this series to the Pirates by a final of two to one. Zach Duke gets the win. He outduels Roy Halladay, even though he lasted three innings less than Roy Halladay. And John Russell's team will head home with four or three wins on this road trip. The W. Mason delivery of the ball game. Well, there weren't a whole lot of deliveries tonight, but it was the game winning hit by Garrett Jones. Here it is. Ground ball or uh, right field. Jason Worth comes up throwing Carlos Ruiz trying to catch or make a quick tag on that short hop and not able to do it. The ball came out right away and lasting millage scored the run there they gave him the lead it turned out to be the winning run and that is our wb mason delivery of the game so the pirates win it two to one as they take game two of this two game series in front of 45,000 plus our chevrolet player of the game zach duke as he picks up his third victory of the season and it's his second win uh, against the Phils. Pretty impressive today, Wheels. Very impressive. Yeah, well, Tom, we talked about him earlier in the game that he has pitched these kind of games against the Phillies before. A lot of times in Pittsburgh, the Phillies have had trouble with their left-handers. Well, Zach Duke did what he had to do tonight. He mixed them up, fastball, curveball, changeup, worked out of a couple jams, pitched around worth it looked like in that one and he with two men on, and uh, then got the final out on a hard hit ball by Francisco, he's our Chevrolet player of the game. Eight saves now for Octavio Dotel. He preserves it for the Pirates.